Company is set to take over the running of the controversial Ameri power plants in a fresh agreement currently before Parliament. The Energy Minister has laid before the House a new agreement seeking a revision of the original $510 million deal signed by the Mahama administration. Government and Mytilenios is set to pay uh, Ameri $91 million US dollars to hand over a management and running of the power plants that were brought in by the Mahama government at the height of the energy crisis. We will recall that. Now, government claims it will make savings of 405 million US dollars on the New Deal. Minority spokesperson on energy, Adam Smutawakilu, is disputing this. He is demanding from the minister evidence to back claims the New Deal is cheaper than the original or they will reject it. They have renegotiated. They have brought it to us in a form of novation agreement. And as ranking, it's my interest to ensure that the good people of Ghana benefit. So we'll go through the document critically, put all the concerns we have before the minister to answer, and then we take our decision okay. as minority either to support it or not. Okay, but from Kerry Look, will the good people of Ghana benefit eventually from this new deal compared to the old deal, which your colleagues on the majority side say um, was bad, which is how come they want a revision? From my own uh, observation and what I have read, I don't see this one to be bad, uh, anything good. But that will depend if the minister is able to explain and clear himself better. Okay. But for now, as I have not met the, 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 the ministry okay. and the minister, this agreement is terrible. Oh, 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 you think the agreement is terrible? It's, it's terrible. In, it, it, it's worse than what you signed with Ameri initially? Ameri agreement was not terrible. It wasn't bad as such. Because at the end of the day, the Attorney General vindicated the agreement. They claim that it cost $510 million when it's supposed to be $360 million. Let's wait. When we meet the minister, we want to ensure that in that agreement, the cost of the equipment is 360 million. Anything beyond 360 million, you know we will not accept it as minority. No. That one we will not accept. He has set a basis that the cost of the equipment is supposed to be 350, uh, 360 million, and that 150 million, Amer was taking it free. The innovation agreement, we want to ensure that the capacity charges that is to pay back for the equipment is 360 million. That is our first step. From, from your reading, is it lower than that from the documents? From the from information the I have, it's, it's more than twice that amount. So you heard the minority spokesperson on energy, Adams Mutawakilu. Let's get some more details on this uh, fresh document that was laid uh, by government yesterday in Parliament. Parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opokugapo uh, joins us uh, in the studio's live. So, Joseph, first of all, this Mytilenius company, who are they? So this is a Greek company from what we gather. Um, some additional details I've gathered in Nikhil that uh, this is a company they describe themselves as a global leader in engineering, procurement, and construction. And mm. on their website, they indicate that they work through a firm called Metka. That should be a familiar terminology in terms of the name of that particular company because Metka is the company whose name came up as the original company from which I'm Mary. Uh, reportedly acquired the said turbines from mm -hmm. to bring to Ghana. And so there was the argument that government could have gone straight to Metka okay. to get these turbine engines and not gone through a Mary, and then that would have been at a lower cost. And so from from what we're gathering, uh, Mytilenius works through Metka. They specialize in the construction of power plants from design and procurement through to construction and completion, and they've achieved what they describe as unprecedented penetration in various developing markets abroad, including projects in Europe, the Middle East, Asia, and Africa. And uh, that's the company that we understand is taking over the operations mm. of the Americans. So you've been studying this uh, fresh document. Uh, w what exactly is being revised in this new agreement? So, for example, the energy minister gives details of what he says are the cost-saving measures. Um, for example, when it comes to what they describe as fixed 
operational and management charges. Uh, they say that in U.S. cents, the existing contracts, the amount on it is $1.355. Uh, but now they're bringing it to 0 0.71, mm. uh, uh, you know, as, as a reduction. When it comes to capacity charges, it used to be 5.6 um, cents. Now they're bringing it to 3.8. Uh, when they get to what they describe as total average cost of the power, um, the, it used to be 14.5. They're bringing it down to 11.7 and making a savings of 2.8. Mm. So th those are some of the specifics. Um, th they went on to explain that the incoming company, Metalinius, has accepted that they'll be doing some payments to Ameri for some of the work that has been done already to the tune of 52.160 million US dollars. That's mm. money that's due Ameri, and the new company will pay that on behalf of the government of Ghana. Okay. Again, government of Ghana is to pay the company an, an, an amount of 39 million US dollars, which is um, cause that had been incurred prior to um, some other contract that had been signed. So all, all that would be an amount of $91 million which will be paid to Ameri even as the new company takes over. Um, when it comes to changes generally, uh, the document says there was a standby letter of agreement. Mm -hmm. And with that standby, uh, you know, it, it's described as the letter of credit. Um, an amount of $51 million was sitting in that. With the new company that's taking over, it will be only $37.5 million, far uh, lower. And, well, with the explanation that the minister is giving, they would be saving a total of 405 million, million U.S. dollars over a 15-year period in terms of the price at which they will be buying electricity from the new company. And when you do the breakdown every year, uh, something in the region of 27 uh, million U.S. dollars is the amount that they are saving over the 15-year period, which then brings it to 405. And so j j just to read verbatim mm -hmm. the conclusion in the document that came to Parliament, the minister makes the point that taking into consideration the huge financial obligation of government and that the existing agreement with Ameri, coupled with the benefits to be derived from the new transaction, particularly the waiver of the 52.7 million, which is due Ameri, that the government of Ghana would have paid, and also the reduction in the letter of credit and the cost saving of 405 million over the period, mm -hmm. and the extension of the term to reduce the effect of tariff on end users of electricity. He is asking that Parliament ratifies this agreement, which they describe as innovation and amendment agreement. So he points to the fact that all the these savings would eventually get to the end user of mm. electricity, which is why they've decided to bring in this new thing. And we're not told about the previous agreement. How much exactly were we supposed to be saving? Because if we are saving 405 million, uh, because the minority disagrees, previously, how much were we saving? So the minority is challenging the claim that some money will be saved. They think mm. rather this would cost more than twice and they draw particular attention to the cost of operating the plant and mm -hmm. say that um, per a previous document uh, with the Addison Committee's report, exactly. there was the indication that the said contract had been overpriced by 150 million. Mm -hmm. And so they say that this is a 510 million deal that was originally done. You say it was overpriced by an amount of 150 million. And so they wouldn't expect the total cost of this new contract to go anything beyond 350 million. Otherwise, then they would reject to it. Okay. So for a layperson, it means that Mytilenius is taking over the running of the AmeriPower plant. For a layperson, that's what it is? That's essentially what this uh, okay. latest agreement indicates. Mm. Now, just before I let you off, Joseph, what are the next steps then in Parliament for this fresh agreement? Because there was another motion by Katie Yamon, we all recall, uh, seeking the same revision. So, uh, from what we're gathering, the Mines and Energy Committee had been deliberating on that particular motion by Katie Yamon, which was referred to the Speaker you recall that at a point in time, the minority in parliament did the stage the walkout mm. based on that because they felt the speaker had used the wrong processes in allowing for the referral, you know, the referral of that document to the Mines and Energy Committee. Mm. Um, I, I gather that um, for the majority side on the Mines and Energy Committee that had been considering the motion, they claimed that uh, they were done with their reports and in their recommendations, they made the specific recommendation that the agreement should be reviewed. And so what the minister has brought in now 
as his request for revision is something that's in line with what they were planning to recommend based on Katie Hammond's motion earlier. Okay. So what they would want to do now is to hold a meeting tomorrow. That meeting was supposed to be today, but then it's been moved to tomorrow morning and take a decision on whether uh, they would make the recommendations separately in terms of the way forward or probably merge the recommendations from this document laid by the minister and that that Katie Hammond had moved and then recommend to Parliament what the next step should be. Joseph, thank you very much. Let's head on the phone lines now and speak to Ben Boach, who is Executive Director of the Africa Centre for Energy Policy. ASEP, thank you very much, Ben Boach, for your time here on Newsnight. So what do you essentially make of the latest move by government to introduce a fresh company, which is Mytilenios, to take over the Ameri Power Plants? Uh, thanks for having me, Mifai. I think for the public and those of us who have been following this transaction, I mean, any ne renegotiation or transfer uh, of ownership or management to any company should translate into savings uh, for the public. And that is what uh, we have been pushing for over the years. But looking at the contract as it is and what we have seen from Parliament, um, we can conclude that this deal is even worse um, than the original uh, contract. Because we signed a five-year arrangement mm -hmm. uh, uh, with uh, uh, Ameri, and we we're supposed to pay $510 million. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a five-year cash flow of uh, $102 million every year. You know, So already we have paid about $171 million. Uh, and under this new agreement, we are committing to pay extra $39 million, which will bring our total settlement to about 210 So what is really being transferred to the new company is that the $300 million that will be left, that we could have paid uh, to Ameri. So over the 15 years that we are agreeing now, we are committing a cash flow of $1.2 billion uh, to this new agreement. And, I mean, it doesn't really make sense for anybody uh, mm. uh, to do that just because you want to save maybe some three cents on a kilowatt hour for the next two years. But we are told we are saving about four, 405 million Ghana CD over the 15-year period. I don't, know, I don't know where that savings is coming from because they are not comparing with any other uh, uh, figure because if you sign a new arrangement for 15 years and you want to compare with the original one, then you have to levelize it to be able to do a proper comparison. You just don't say that because uh, you are doing this at 11.7, uh, that translates into a savings. Because at, uh, Ameri's contract would have terminated in the next uh, two years, after which the country owns it, and the tariff would have reduced to 10.4. So if you are giving us 11.7 for 15 years, that definitely makes it more expensive. Because if you subtract the difference between the 10.4 and the 11.7, uh, you are talking about a cash flow of about $370 million that you are going to pay to this new company. So this cannot be a savings to the public. It's a total... Uh, 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 a totally bad deal that uh, we are committing ourselves to at this point. So from your reading, this deal will not be cheaper? No, I think, I mean, it, it has to be rejected by Parliament, and that is my nightmare, <laughs> you know, because when you expect Parliament to save you, they don't. So I don't know whether this will be, uh, an, as usual, rubber stamped, and later uh, we will come shouting that the country uh, uh, has been dealt uh, a bad deal, and I think that is where the challenge always is. So what would you rather government does in this situation? You know, I think, it, I mean, it should be rejected. I've seen the document and I've seen an executive approval from the president. I'm worried by that because uh, the, the initial one was approved by cabinet. So if we are revising it based on a promise to renegotiate the agreement, one would have expected such thorough, you know, assessment of the contract and a new one by cabinet. But this time around, it's an executive approval by the president, you know, and forwarded to, uh, 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 to, to, to Parliament to approve of it. You know, so I think Parliament would do us a great deal if they can reject this uh, for a proper renegotiation to be done, or we commit to pay. What is even scary is that you are committed to pay for 15 years, and if you look at, you know, generation, planned generation systems that are coming on stream, in the next two years, a merit may be a surplus requirement, which we wouldn't need. If it had become Ghana's property, we can decide to shut it down. But in this particular case, we will continue to pay under take or pay agreement whether we need it or not, you know, for 15 years, when we do know that more efficient plants are coming on stream. And once those plants come on stream, America will be a surplus requirement because the plant itself is so inefficient. It consumes more fuel 
than those that are coming, uh, like Send Power, Amandi, and all of that. So it's, it's, it cannot be a good deal for Ghana. But, but then uh, consider this. This, intervention will, will come in at this, point. this new company, Mighty Linios, has a closer link with Matka than Ameri. Does it not keep, put them in a better position to deliver than Ameri would have? I think it's another deception because, it, I mean, I have documents you know, that shows that they were negotiating with Metka to uh, uh, take over the contract. Now it has metamorphosed into a different name, you know, of a company. You know, so that is the kind of deception you have with public contracts, so that you don't see exactly how you link it to who, you know, in this whole transaction. And I, I think that, I mean, these things don't help the public, and we need to know exactly who the faces are, who the individuals are. Uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in this arrangement. Mm. It doesn't benefit me by transferring a contract to another company if it doesn't uh, uh, improve uh, my welfare or what I'm supposed to pay uh, in the long run. So changing the faces brings no value you know, to, 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 to us. We have to analyze whether we can make genuine savings on uh, the American deal. If we cannot, then, I mean, we must pay for it because if that is cheaper than what we are negotiating, uh, nobody will opt for that option. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, uh, worried that even over this period, you don't see direct negotiation with Ameri itself. But we have been negotiating with Metka, which is supposed to be an EPC contractor of Ameri. We signed an agreement with Ameri, and over the period we spent time engaging Metka rather than the Ameri itself that we thought had shipped to Ghana. Okay. You know, for the five hundred and ten million dollars. Uh, uh, mm. Mr. Boachi, we are grateful for your time. Ben Boachi is executive director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy (ASEP). Now, away from that, the Ghana Union of Traders Association (GUTA) is accusing the Trades Ministry of bowing to diplomatic pressure a day to enforcing the deadline it gave for removing foreigners from Ghana's retail markets. Traders here in Accra are agitating over the ministry's decision to suspend the deadline. This comes on the back of a threat by government to take legal action action against foreign retailers who do not leave the markets by July 27. But today, the ministry has pulled the brakes on its plans to ban the foreign retailers, explaining that the suspension is to help them intensify sensitization and education in the domestic retail trade sector. But some traders are infuriated with the ministry's decision. Listen to some of them. So, the president of Guta, Dr. Joseph Obain, says the traders will be holding an emergency meeting with the sector ministry next week, but wants government to enforce the ban on non ghanaians operating in the retail markets now. It's very unfortunate, but we have a meeting with the minister on Tuesday, so we'll see what goes from there. But this thing should be managed, managed well, otherwise it will get out of hand. Apparently. Why do you say so? Uh, I say so because um, the minister says they, they want to get a, a sensitive time to educate uh, the members of the uh, foreign traders and all that. But we know also that they are very much aware of our laws in the country. And that we also know that the deputy trade minister have actually talked with them regarding the obligation as to the laws of this country. So we don't know what is up now. It's a law. It, it has to be implemented. We can't take it again. What seems to be the difficulty for the trade ministry from your perspective? Yeah, from my perspective is from the diplomatic pressure and all that. We, are, we have a sovereign country and we should re respect the sovereignty of the nation. We are not talking about anything. We are talking about the laws. We are not talking about people being sacked from the, from the market unlawfully. We are talking that people who have complied should do their legitimate business and those who are not complied should get out. So what are they telling us? Also to disrespect the law or what? Going forward, what is Guta demanding? Uh, we are demanding that the laws of the country should be respected and uh, be applied and implemented. That's all that we are, uh, we are saying. We are not afraid of competition or uh, otherwise. But the market is being taken away from us. This is the only place that those of us who couldn't fund mainstream government works and, and fund ourselves in the informal sector. So why did a government um, not enforce uh, the ban as announced? We've been speaking to the Deputy Trade Minister, Carlos Ahinkra, who says the ministry will have to sensitize the foreign retailers before the committee enforces the ban, but will not give timelines. I am happy that at least you'll be able to identify that it's a long list, it's a tall list. If I sit here and I give you two days, three days, one week, I'll be lying to you. What I have told you earlier still stands, it still holds. We are going to put a strategic plan on paper, 
we will tell ourselves when we think that we are able to educate these people so well that everybody understands the, 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 the law, what the law says. We are not even just going to deal with it. We'll deal with their embassies and the leadership of the trading uh, association. Now, when we are done and we know that education has gone down well, that is when we will now go in, the committee will now go in with a checklist and then see who has qualified, who hasn't qualified. So it's a tall list of activities or an exercise that we intend carrying out. If I tell you we'll do it tomorrow, the next day, and tomorrow and the next day, we're not going to complete the sensitization drive. What are you going to say? You're going to say, ah, this man speaks. I already, Guta said, I don't, I don't speak the truth. I've they've been saying peddling on, 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 on radio all day. But the fact is, I will not sit here and give myself a date when I don't even know where these people are located or how I'm going to find them. It is very sad. It is very, very sad. In fact, when I sit down and I reminisce on, on how the uh, picking on me as a uh, uh, the the person who is not being they use the word competent in this matter I find it very very sad uh, I have been with Guta you know for many years a lot of them I have known since the 80s and uh, we've grown together I, I'm virtually a member of Guta from what I used to do in private life what they don't know is I have superiors my minister is my superior my president is my superior I have so many the chief of staff is my superior I take instructions I I'm not an island an authority on my own Deputy Trades Minister Carlos Ahinkra. Now, coordinator of the school feeding secretariat, Dr. Kwame Eduncia, says Dalex Finance retained over 400,000 Ghana CDs of interest on the 5 million Ghana CDs the former management invested at the financial firm. The 2017 Auditor General's report on public accounts of ministries, departments, and agencies revealed that the Ghana school feeding program invested 16 million Ghana CDs with Dalex Finance and Leasing Company, as well as Cal Bank in 2016. The report indicated that the program invested 5 million Ghana cities and 11 million cities in July 2016. Dr. Edunsia tells Joy News the mandated institution will act on the matter. In July, that was 29th July 2016, an amount of 5 million was invested with Delex Finance. And then in November 13, 2016, they returned 3 million, that's back to school feeding. And then in December, January 2017, 4th January 2017, they returned 2.466941.09 pesos. This money was paid. And when you look at it, it earned an interest of 466,941 and 9 pesos. This was for Dilex Finance. Then, um, when you talk about. Dr. Yeah, Sia, help me understand this. The interest of more than 400,000 Ghana cities was retained by Dilex Finance. Yes, that's what we have on paper. Okay. Was it the school feeding program that officially puts that money in Dilex Finance? Um, at that time, yes. The management yeah, transferred this amount to Dilex Finance. Okay, uh, for the sake of time, we cannot go through the rest of the transactions, but I will ask that what action would you pursue or would you recommend be taken against management at the time? Um, once the Auditor General's report has captured it, then it will be taken up by the appropriate authority. But Chief Executive Officer of Dalex Finance, Ken Thompson, says the investment is normal occurrence in the banking sector. He, however, wants the school feeding secretariat to check its records because all monies have been duly paid to them. But the practice of institutions placing their excess funds, finance companies, and banks, it's been happening over the years. It, it, it happened, it's, it's normal practice. And I think it's good practice because there's no point allowing your money to sit in the bank when could earn interest. And then, Would you consider writing to the Auditor General, giving the uh, bad press? I don't think it's necessary. I think maybe there's a misunderstanding. And I, I know that any reasonable person would know that there was nothing underhand. I mean, uh, it's, just, it's, just a, it's just a misunderstanding. I, I wouldn't write to If you have an issue, you give it to the person who you are reporting on to respond. But I, I suspect that wasn't done maybe because of this attack. That's what I think. And I, I, I know that anybody, anybody who looks at the matter, whereas that Dalex has done absolutely nothing wrong. Cow Bank was also giving 11 million. And Cow Bank didn't do anything wrong. It was just normal business practice. On the same page that has the same page that has Dalex finance taking 5 million. We also have the ministry giving Cow Bank 11 million. It's the same thing. We spoke to the Secretariat today and the Secretariat was saying that Dalex retained over 400,000 of the money as in profit. Then maybe you should look in his records again because we have records of the check that we sent. We have of, of the transfer that was made back then. But for us, it's normal practice. So I don't see why we should retain 40,000. I mean, that is a, that is a, I would say he needs to check his records again because no. speak to any finance company, it can't happen. I mean, if I give you the statement of account, it shows the money that were paid and when we were paid and how it was paid. So maybe you should look in his bank account. 
Mm. Uh, so you have uh, uh, Ken Thompson, is the chief executive officer of Dalex Finance, and George Riafe is in the studios with the latest um, from the world of business. Mm. I can't resist the temptation of asking you: um, Can a state institution uh, of that sort, school feeding program, uh, take money, invest in the private, uh, you know, uh, you know, banking and financial, you know, uh, institution rather than investing in the the well, school feeding well, program? Uh, it looks like it was allowed in the past, but okay. there's a program by government to ensure that all these government institutions move their funds to the Bank of Ghana instead mm. of private firms. But you ask yourself, what was that money meant for? Was it their own money that they had in the bank and they thought that maybe it would be good to invest in a private firm mm. to get some returns? Or these were government funds that were placed in with these private institutions. There have been issues about state institutions and even ministries taking government's money and again lending to government through mm. bonds as well. But mm. you want to understand the arrangement behind this. Dillex as an institution, Carl Bank as a bank haven't done anything wrong by okay. taking on these funds. Rather, you might want to blame the school feeding secretariat per their engagement. Are they allowed to take funds given to them by government so to also make some sector. profits? Mm on these monies when they actually lend these monies back to government mm. and claim interest on them well it's a good time to take over well of course when you're talking about bonds and government today issued a three-year bond and they got slightly lower than what they were looking forward to we'll look at the implications of this as well and trade ministry to go ahead with the enforcement of laws on retail trade despite a good decision to exit from the national committee now the business news on news night is brought to you by mtn business Welcome to the new world of business. Kingdom Books and Stationery, your number one stop shop for all your office essentials and stationery. Having plaques and set aside mosquito spray, pleasant on humans, tough nightmare on insects, United Pension Trustees, my own pensions, pensions, pa -pa -pa, and Mark Autopads, distributors of Chevy vehicles. Hey, what time? Feeling you good. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Oba. Actually, you had a few. You have one minute remaining. Hey, Oba. The way they feel you, I don't understand. Hey, your nose, your eyes, your shoulders, your knees, your toes, everywhere, everywhere. I, I, they like you. You are too much for me. Why, mommy, you know they like me. Why? She thinks I don't get money. Me, I get plenty money. I get cash. Make her tell you where I won't go. Paris, Jordan, Dubai, London, even back here. Brian, hey, Fluffy, young take man. you. Yeah. This is not Oba. This is a mother speaking. Chai. Some things shouldn't be rushed. That's why there are so many ways to talk, text, and browse for long on Ghana's number one network mtn just dial 505 and choose from a wide range of offers to enjoy the most amazing mobile experience everywhere you go we give you nothing but the best we stay above the rest more quality more affordability kingdom books and stationery everybody's going to the one and only shop we're customized Guarantee Kingdom Bush and Stationery. Oh, yes, with our 30 days credit facility with no interest charge, free delivery services, and our free consultation on setting up your office. Kingdom Books and Stationery is unmatched in our delivery of quality and affordable office essentials, equipment, and furniture. Experience world class customer service in all our branches in Accra, Tema, Kumasi, Cape Coast, and Takwadi. Call us on 0302 764. 101 or visit our website at www.kingdomgh.com kingdom books and stationery your number one stop shop for all of his essentials kingdom and stationery terms and conditions apply Super, you are still listening to this budget reading. Sure, Masa, it's a budget. No, it's not. Now, what's the subject? Sure, they say Mr. Mr. Shami personal budget. Ah, now I am going to wait there. I will join the pension. Hey, wait there. One man, one pension plan. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Sign up to my own pension plan with United Pension Trustees and gain access to higher interest additional benefits such as savings account and flexible contributions. With your pension, pa pa pa. Secure your future by signing on to my own pension from United Pension Trustees. Go to your MTN Momo menu by dialing star 170 hash. Select option 9 for pensions and insurance. Then option 1 for my own pension. Then you select option 1 to enroll and follow the prompts. Make daily, weekly and monthly contributions contributions to build your wealth with United Pension Trustees. For further inquiries, call our customer service center on 0242-436-880 or 0302-208-042. My own pension. Pension papa. -pa -pa. That is a sweet sound of excellence. <laughs> 
That is the sound from Mac. Yes, Mac Ghana is the number one distributor of the world's best quality Isuzu and Chevrolet vehicles in Ghana. Isuzu tracks from 1.5 tons to heavy duty vehicles. Isuzu buses from 15 to 33 seaters, double and single cabin pickup available in automatic and manual transmissions. We also stock a wide range of Chevy cars from SUVs, sedans and small cars fully loaded with exquisite specifications. All our range of vehicles stand out due to its high fuel efficiency, safety, luxury, spacious interior, world-class delivery and after-sales servicing. What's more, we offer flexible payment terms to meet your pocket. Mark Ghana is a sole distributor for Isuzu trucks and pickups as well as all range of Chevrolet cars in Ghana. Call us on 0302-813-919 in Accra or 0242-039-550 in Kumasi. Visit our website at markghana.com. Mark Ghana, with you for the long run. Joy 99.7 FM, radio for the discerning listener. Let's now settle for the details. And government today secured slightly lower than what it was targeting in the three-year bond sale. According to the government's bond calendar, it was hoping to raise 500 million Ghana cities, but secured 471 million Ghana cities in bids from investors. There is more in the following Business Dex report. It is not clear for now what might have contributed to this challenge, but some analysts have argued that it can be linked to the decision by investors to get out of emerging markets like Ghana due to developments in the U.S. market. This is the second time in a row that a bond issued by government has been undersubscribed. It also has implications for the city as activities of these investors have contributed to the continued depreciation, which is today trading around four cities 83 pesos. Government is planning to pay about 18% as interest on the bond. This is slightly higher than what it paid last time when a similar paper was issued. The bond was done through a joint book building approach, which is managed by three financial institutions. It is also not clear whether the undersubscription could also have any slight impact on the projects that would draw its funding from this bond, or even if it's meant to help clear papers that are maturing. And that was a business tech spot. So why are we worried about this development? Well, government in the time past have issued papers and has been seriously oversubscribed. Now, the trade ministry says we'll go ahead with work on enforcing laws covering trading in the country's retail markets. Now, the Ghana Union Trade Association has actually raised an issue with this problem. But this was after the union announced that it was withdrawing from the National Committee tax with the enforcement of the country's investment laws. Now, Deputy Trade Minister Carlos Ayinkra says government has been forced to take these stands because of the posture of the unionized traders. The exercise was done. It's just a national exercise. And the committee, as I speak to you, they are even meeting. If Guta is not meeting or is not part of it, it doesn't mean that the national exercise is, is going to abate. No. We will still carry on with our mandate as a ministry. So if part of the benefits affect Guta, why not? We appreciate it. But it is not because of Guta that we are doing this. Despite the fact that they were the proponents, they were the ones that came strongly for this uh, 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 thing to be revived because it was done under Hanatete, it was done under Haruna, it was done under Spew, and nothing has come out of it. We say, let's see how we can also, because you cannot keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. So if this was the way that they went and they did not get any results, let us see how we can try back, try, change our style and see if we get some results. And we will get the results. But what we will not allow is for anybody to take the laws into their own hands, to go out there and say, say to people that you are not compliant, so leave the market. You know, the trade minister has maintained that enforcing the law would not result in the sacking of foreigners from the country, but rather they will ensure that they regularize their stay in the country and ensure that they comply with the laws. Now, Labour expert Austin Gama has described moves to outsource the payroll management of the public sector as a prudent one. Finance Minister Ken Ofriata and the media budget review maintain that they are working to outsource the management of the wage bill. Let's say the payroll of the public sector. Now, some have criticized this move, saying that it will bring additional cost to the states. While some have also maintained that it might not be the first time government is going this way. But the former employment minister and consultant maintains that it could be the answer to the challenges in maintaining a good wage bill. 
Yeah, could could partially if the uh, information is fully supplied to the uh, sourced agency, uh, 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 who must be properly uh, uh, who must understand the confidentiality aspect of these things. It, it can be done. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, for you know, it may be uh, the answer to to, to the canker. Austin Gama is a labor expert. Now, expect some heavy participation by institutional investors and fund managers in the last days of MTN's initial public offering. Now, that's the projection coming from fund manager of Strategic African Securities, Anton Tegbatu. Now, the initial public offering of MTN is expected to end next Tuesday. It is still not clear for now whether the telecoms giant is close to raising all the 3.47 billion Ghana cities. Jebato has been explaining to Joy Business the basis for their projection. We expect that it's a good company done an analysis. We think that it is good, it's a good investment, yeah, just selling about 35% to, to local market. And that means that the original shareholders are still holding on to the chunk of it. So, of course, if it is something that is bad, I'm not sure they will sell it to us. We've done our analysis and we believe that it's a good stock, it's a good company to invest in. So we can invest in and we would also push some money into it. In terms of fund management, because obviously if you go in on the first day, the money will be kept in an escrow account. So for cash man management purposes, uh, fund management and funds like this will go in from this week and perhaps uh, settle on the last day. Now Mr. Gabato made this revelation after addressing shareholders of the SA's Fortune Fund that is annual general meeting in a crowded fund made an annual return of 43.16% at the end of last year or 2000 and 17,000 performing the average return that you've gotten on the market. It might be a good time to turn to the stock market. If you put your money on the market in terms of returns, you're doing about 14.90%, still slightly better than what you might be getting on your deposits, and maybe as well as the treasury bills. For investors of Guinness, the value of its share held today went down by 8 pesos to close the two Ghana cities, 25 pesos. However, for GCB, it was up by 2 pesos per share, and it's now worth 5 Ghana cities, 5 pesos. And that's all for business on Newsnight. And back to you, MFA. We are all preparing for the corporate jam. Corporate jam is going down you tomorrow. Know, it's down, now. baby. Oh. <laughs> yes, it is. George, we are here with the latest from the world of business. Now, some of your messages that you've sent in via WhatsApp, 0244340437, we'll go through some of them. And Malik in Kumasi says, the realities on the ground concerning the implementation of free senior high school policy review that not much insight uh, in terms of work was done ahead of its uh, full rollout. The actual ground assessment work on the state of affairs was down for political promise fulfillment. This should not happen again. This one from uh, Yamusu in Kumbungu says the review of a Mary deal is very welcoming. Minority is only trying to mock at it. Value for money has become the hallmark of Nanado led government. Uh, this one from Ernest in Kukum says I'm saddened by the peddling of falsehood by the government, all in the name of actualizing a campaign promise without caring about the dangers the policy posed to the future of our children. So now it's a hybrid and not a same as implemented in the countries they themselves themselves mentioned. And this one from Barry Makubaji in Jinejini says, I actually expected this government to shut down and marry immediately it came into power with the kinds of allegations made in opposition at hindsight. This government is always on a deceptive terrain. It's unfortunate, Ghana. Okay. And this one from Kofi Seidu says, when the NPP government was making uh, propaganda with a free senior high school just to score cheap political goal, uh, did they not know that infrastructure cum funding was going to expose them one day, asking rich parents to pay for the awards education is vindication of the NDC's long-held position. Some of your uh, comments there that you've sent in, thank you very much for sending them. Please keep them coming. And this one, uh, we away from uh, your messages now. The policeman at the center of the alleged assault of a grandmother at Midland Savings and Loans Company is to remain in police custody up until August 9, 2018. Frederick Amano was remanded by an Accra Secute Court today after pleading not guilty to a charge of assault. He was arrested last Friday after he was seen in the white shared video footage beating up the woman who carried a baby. Joseph Akable has the rest of the story. The complainant in the case is Patience Osafu, who prosecutors described as a petty trader and resides at Shiashi here in Accra. 
They told the court she visited a Shashi branch of Midland Savings and Loans on 13th, 16th and 19th of July. They say on all occasions she wasn't attended to even though other customers were attended to. According to the prosecutors, officials of the company blamed their inability to attend to her on network challenges. On July 19, the day the assaults are alleged to have taken place, patients of Safu arrived at 7.30 a.m., waited till the bank opened at 9 a.m. As at 2 p.m., she has still not been attended to. The prosecutors further said she begged the officials to at least allow her to withdraw an amount of 105 CDs to settle debts and feed her grandchild. Two bank officials, one Kukua and Shelley, are said to have instructed a policeman to remove her from the bank. The prosecutors wrapped up the address to the court by saying the policeman admitted to the offense in his caution statement when he was arrested by the police. The case has been adjourned to August 9, 2018. Joseph Akable there uh, with that report. So apart from this incident where the policeman beat up that grandmother, uh, there was another incident where police, uh, some policemen shot and killed seven people in Mansun Kwanta in the Ashanti region. Now, the Inspector General of Police, David Asante, appeared to has welcomed proposals for an independent body to probe recent infractions involving uh, the police. In an exclusive interview with Kojo Yangson, Mr. Apiyoti says an independent probe of such cases will ensure transparency. In many jurisdictions, Police malfeasance are normally tried by independent bodies for obvious reasons, so that people will see the transparency in the investigations of the matter. Maybe in future, that is the way we should go. And it will make every police officer sit up and be professional in the way we do our things. Is that an indication that you don't have much faith in the investigations that are done internally by police? No. Not at all. Immediately when this thing occurred, there was this outcry. We don't want the police to do it. That is the natural way for every human you know, to respond to mm. such an incident. But if we have an independent body trying a matter like this, it's a win-win thing. Both parties will accept the outcome. You heard that the Inspector General of Police, David Asante, appeared to. The full interview will be aired uh, tomorrow on Joy News Channel or Multi TV. Uh, that exclusive interview with Kuju Yangsen uh, will be aired at 6 a.m. It's the a.m. show. Make sure you catch it on uh, Joy News Channel or Multi TV. It's time now for Joy News Agenda. And it's a busy and major route that connects motorists to many communities like Ayi Mensa, Ibri, Oyare, Fadudu, Pantan, among others. For a stretch of the road like this, you would expect that well functioning traffic lights are installed to control the flow of vehicles. But the reality is all three traffic lights in the enclave do not work. As a result, accidents at the STA intersection on the Medina Ibri Highway are common. For Joy News Agenda, focusing on dysfunctional traffic lights, Beryl and Nestina Richter visited the area and her report is read to you. Call it a death zone and you wouldn't be mistaken at all. Only the boldest drivers go through this Adenta SDA junction stretch. This is because traffic lights here have been defective for months and accidents at the intersection are a daily ritual. The only time motorists and residents heave a sigh of relief is during rush hours in the morning and evening when personnel from the Adenta MTTD direct and manage traffic at this place. Across the road is a school and a taxi rank. Also close by are shops and food vendors. A corn seller, Gifty Enchi, shares with Joy News the nightmare they have to live with as a result of the malfunctioning traffic lights. It has brought a lot of problems. Accidents happen here frequently. School children cross this highway and this makes the situation very serious. Some residents here attribute the situation to a faulty electric pole in the area. Uh, recently, one of our guys here told us there's a problem at the ECG, one of their poles, where they tap the light from. So that's a Joy News Agenda uh, for today. And it's time now to join Gary Al Smith with the latest from the world of sports. How are you doing, Gary? Doing well, MFA. How are you too? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for asking. And thank you for your time. Now, time now for the sports. Uh, new Inter Milan signing Kojo Asamoa has opened up on his long absence from international duty. Asamoa last featured for the Black Stars at the 2014 World Cup. And in an exclusive interview with Joy Sports, he explains to me why he took the decision to come back. 
Also, he promises to make a return in September when Ghana face Kenya in Africa Cup of Nations as well. Now, an interesting thing about the national teams is that the Black Princesses coach Yusuf Basigi has named his squad for the Under-20 Women's World Cup. Head coach of the Black Princesses has named 21 players for the competition that takes place in France next month. The team is dominated by several of the players from the Black Maidens side that featured at under 20 at the under 17 Women's World Cup two years ago. Also, two players, Sandra Usu Ansa and Ernestina Abambila, that took part in the 2016 tournament, have been included in the squad. Meanwhile, Ghana will be without their star striker, Princella Edubia, who is ruled out as a result of injury. And the Ampim Dakwa player finished as a top scorer in the qualified with nine goals. So we go back to that Kwejo Asamoah story where he tells us about why he comes back into the national team. Don't forget that the national team will be playing in qualifiers for the African Cup of Nations in 2019. And he's expecting that Chris Yapia will be calling him back as well. I didn't want to come to the national team being there like having 80% fit and then not being confident on the field of play. I wanted to be in the team, be fit and then play for a position. You're, you're one player that Ghanaians admire so much. And almost every day people are asking when is Kujia Samoa coming. So if I get what you're saying, you are now available and if Kusia Pia should call you for our next game in September, you will come and play. Yeah, yes I am. Because I spoke to him before coming to Ghana. That was a few weeks ago. So I spoke to him and I told him this is a friendly game. Um, if he could help me uh, spend me this time around to uh, make use of this opportunity to pack my things and then stuff. And he understood. So the next game, I told him I'll be with the team. The full interview of, of Kujasama will be on the Journey's channel as well, including the fact that he talks about whether, indeed, as rumor said, he saw... You remember the rumor? <laughs> he saw lions and tigers because he was giving the number. He did or not? Yeah, he said it wasn't true. Oh, okay. Yes, but he heard mm. the rumors. Mm. <laughs> Gary L. Smith with the latest from the world of sports. Now, um, yesterday you recall that we told you about a story at Bimbila Senior High School where uh, students have to use, or oh, about thou more than 1,000 students have to share one toilet facility. Uh, at the recent health screening in the school, also 250 girls out of the 600 examined tested positive. Uh, for candidiasis. Uh, I'll bring you excerpts of that um, report by Justice Bedu. <laughs> Inside the Bimbila Senior High School, dozens of students are returning from what they call a long walk, a term they have coined for open defecation. Many of them look shy as they see my microphone. I'm coming from long. It's a place students usually go to ease themselves. 17-year-old Soraya Atta is one of them. Their school has just one toilet on campus. So I asked why they would not use it. At times you go there, your clothes will be smelling. Immediately you enter into the class, they'll know. A recent screening showed more than 200 girls in the school have contracted candidiasis, a vaginal infection which may cause genital itching and sometimes a white cheese-like fluid discharge. Safia Adama. Mm. So those were uh, excerpts of, of that uh, report brought to you by Justice Beidou uh, from the Bimbila Senior High School. So that broadcast yesterday was about these female students at the Bimbila Senior High School contracting various uh, vaginal or vaginal infections as a result of uh, open defecation. Now, this was based on a research reported by international NGO ActionAid, which reviewed 250 out of the 600 girls examined had candidiasis. Unfortunately, in the search story, one of the characters erroneously added that he had contracted gonorrhea and syphilis because of the open uh, defecation or as a result of using that same toilet with her other colleagues. This error was inadvertently allowed to play. The necessary correction was later made, but it was discovered too late that the corrected version of the sound had not loaded in the studio, resulting in the repeat of that error. Joy News apologizes uh, for that error once again. Yep.
It's a solemn atmosphere at the Accra International Conference Center where hundreds of ordinary and high-profile Ghanaians have been paying their last respects to the late former Vice President, Pakwesi Bekun Emisa Arthur. As he was laid in state uh, today at the Accra International Conference Center, the former statesman whose sudden death on June 29 remains a shock to many was mostly described as a gentleman among gentlemen. His sister, Laura Ofobike, says it will be the wish of her brother that the youth in Ghana are given quality education in his memory. He was particularly concerned about the quality of education for young people and he would want to be remembered as somebody who tried his best to do things the right way uh, with integrity. So I wish that the country will remember him by um, making sure that children get the good education. Now, uh, some leading political figures also uh, came to pay their last respects. Minority leader Haruna Idrisu wants uh, a monument erected in honor of the former vice president. He's gone with his humility. He's gone with his compassion. He's gone with his death, appreciating economics and finance. And for me, essentially, he was a cash flow and liquidity wizard contributed immensely supporting Dr. Kusibuchi at the time for the necessary and compelling transformation of the Ghanaian economy. Now, former Trades Minister Ekos Pio Gabra wants Ghanaians to reflect on their lives, saying death will visit everyone. But I've always remembered him, of course, also as the Vice President of Ghana, when I served in the cabinet of uh, President Mahama, as a relatively quiet and calm and very serious and focused individual who appreciated his role as a public servant above all that he was there to serve people but for these politicians even in their grief their politics was visible second deputy speaker of parliament alban bagbin demanded strong leadership for the ndc well i pray i pray that he's able to do that i just pray that his death is able to do that uh, it's quite difficult but um, I, I don't see even the party taking advantage of his sudden departure to make that in place, to put that in place. Mm. And so you heard the, uh, Alban Bagbe and also the General Secretary of the Governing MPP, John Buedu, says the person, uh, the persona of the late uh, Vice President was foreign to the NDC. But presidential hopeful of the NDC, Professor Joshua Alabi, disagrees. According to him, the country is being divided under President uh, Kufuado. But let's head to the Accra International Conference Center now and speak to my colleague, Komla uh, Adum. Komla, it's been a long day out there. Are people still filing past the body of uh, the late Vice President? Well, MFR, um, filing pass has ended, actually, a few minutes ago. The body of the former vice president, Kwesi Misarata, was um, taken out of the premises of the Accra International Conference Centre. We are told that it will be returned early tomorrow morning for His Excellency President Ekufuado, his vice president, Council of State members, security chiefs, to also come and pay their respects very early in the morning before the service is held right there at the Accra International Conference Centre. But simultaneously, there will be a, a ceremony at the forecourt of the State House. So right here at the State House, you see the place is set up with a giant screen in the center of the place where the church service, which will be happening at the Accra International Conference, I will be beamed live right here at the forecourt because of the anticipated spillover of people mm. who are expected to attend tomorrow's function. MFM. Komla Adum then, do stay tuned to your power station, Joy 99.7 FM, and the Joy News Channel on Multi TV tomorrow as we bring you live updates and coverage of the state burial of His Excellency Kwesi Bekwe Emisa Arthur. And that's it uh, for Newsnight. There's more when you log on to myjoyonline.com. I am MFA Apao, personality profile with Samuel Atamils, and Lexis Bill is up next. Mm -hmm.